Let's just stay in that atmosphere of worship. Keep your heart in reverence to God because I tell you there are people here who need miracles today. 
And I would not be want, want to be the one that stood in the way of somebody who needed a miracle. So let's keep that reverential spirit for for God as we welcome Brother Eric. I'm going to, um, yeah, you can go ahead and start. I'm sure Daniel's already got it. Um, thought Al, I thought you might like to say a word or two, but I, I know what I want to say. Um, I prayed. I told Brother Eric a couple months ago, I said, you don't know this, but you're an answer to my prayer. He said, well, I've been called a lot of things. That's a good one. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I told you earlier, my call to the body of Christ is to teach the body. It's wonderful that we're going to receive miracles today. That's a wonderful thing. But what do you do when it's the midnight hour and you're all alone and there's no church singing great and wonderful hymns and there's no bunch of people around you? What do you do when you can't get a hold of anybody but Jesus? And uh, I know Eric's heart is the same as mine, not only to release the miracle working power of God, but to teach the body of Christ to receive from God when there is no one else around. And it's very, very important whether the need is a child who's lost and messed up on drugs or a, a loved one who is sick and on their deathbed or the need is a place in your body or finances or whatever it is that we can receive from our great and mighty and awesome God. And that's what I love about Brother Eric because he, he has that same heart that I have to stand in faith and know the God that we serve. He's a powerful young man. He's anointed. I know God has a wonderful future in store for him. And Al, did you have something you wanted to add? I just wanted to let everybody know. I said it once, and I'll repeat myself. <clears throat> Tuesdays, 6.30, and Thursday at 6.30. Uh, it's certainly worth coming to hear this man teach the Bible. It's a school. It's not a church service. It's a school. It's called Seoul University. And if you like me, I didn't never go to school. I didn't like school. But <laughs> this school here I like. This is one school. How about the tests? Uh, <laughs> yeah, school of hard knocks. I definitely went to that school. I think we both did. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to suck any more time up. I'm going to ask Pastor Eric to come up and bless your people. And you just such a privilege to have him here today. Pastor Amen. Eric, do Pastor Eric, do it your way. I will. I tell you, with that kind of introduction, maybe I should be in Tampa next August at the Republican convention. <laughs> run, run for office. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to have a moral person in the office? Uh, not perfect, just moral, you know. Well, if you're watching by the World Wide Web on Ustream, we're welcoming you to Shallow's Place. Uh, we are so glad you're watching. If you're watching live or if you're watching this archive, the anointing is the same. There's no difference in the realm of the spirit between being uh, live or being watching if, if that's what you're able to do. Now, if you could get here and live uh, and you wanted to watch it, I hope the Holy Ghost blacks it out for you. I hope you have to come on down because there's still time to get here. You know, but if you can't make it, then the, the Lord honors that. And the anointing is the same right there in your room. Um, I, I minister, uh, as the Lord wills, prophetically. Um, it's not as I will, it's not as I conjure it up. But it's getting stronger and stronger um, as we go along here, particularly since I've geographically changed locations. You know, you're, you're much more well-received in that mantle, in that office, when you're not at home. Because they've changed your diapers, they've seen you cut their grass, they've seen you play high school basketball, college basketball, and they see you a certain way, and they don't, they don't receive you um, necessarily because of preconditioning and familiarity that breeds contempt the way the Lord wants them to see you. And that's why Jesus relocated his ministry from uh, Nazareth and um, over to Capernaum. And uh, I want to do a couple of things right now along these lines. Uh, it's not going to be spectacular, but it'll be supernatural. Uh, two things. Uh, Miss Diana, would you come up real quickly? She has no idea that I was going to ask her to do this, but I don't think that should surprise her by now. This is, uh, Mrs. This is Mrs. Diana Soto. 
And I want to uh, ask her to tell you guys a little bit about what she does and what, what happened yesterday. And then I want, to, want you to lead us in prayer for that. Um, the Spirit of God was dealing with me about that over there. And um, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. But just share about what happened yesterday. Let me hand you, hand you the mic under here. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Um, first, I want to say, first and foremost, before I go into anything else, this man has been a real blessing in my life. He also is a prayer answered, so thank you. Praise God for him. Um, okay. Um, as you said, my name is Diana, and I work for World Relief. I work with victims of human trafficking. If anyone doesn't know what that is, that's modern day slavery. People who are forced, coerced into the sex trade, into labor, um, working for no money, in horrible conditions, beatings, uh, disfigurements. I mean, you name it, the horrors that you could possibly imagine, those are the things that I deal with on a day to day basis. Um, what happens is the police will rescue a person and our job, World Relief's job, is to restore their lives, whether it be through um, introducing them to pastors who can pray with them and taking them to church, medical attention, whatever the case may be, housing, whatever it is, we help them restore their lives. Um, a wonderful blessing yesterday, uh, we, Pastor Eric Awesome guy, awesome guy. I, have to, I can't say enough good things about him. Allowed um, me to have a meeting with a former victim of human trafficking who is an actress. Um, her name is Su um, Brooke Susan Park Bello, and she was on the show uh, Stargate SG-1. She was the African-American young woman on that show. Um, no one knew her story. She had been... Uh, sold into sexual exploitation, beaten horribly, just awful things happened to her. And um, she failed as an actress at that time in her life because of all the trauma. So she is now working with victims of human trafficking to restore their lives. Awesome woman of God. She is just amazing. And um, so we met at her, at Pastor Eric's home to... Um, to do an interview and a videotaping of the role of not just FCI's role, because FCI has a role in human trafficking, um, in volunteering and, and all of that, but as my role as the case manager working with the victims. And um, we, why we met at Pastor Eric's, because it was kind of the in the middle. She's in Sarasota. I'm in Newport Ritchie, so it was kind of the middle ground for us. Um, and um, uh, just, I saw miracles, amazing. Um, Pastor Eric spoke many prophecies unto her, and just blessed. She blessed us, and he and we blessed her. So, um, anything else? Yeah. What I want. One of the things that that Brooke mentioned uh, as she was leaving and passing. If you're listening, the Holy Ghost is speaking. It doesn't mean that someone's going to stop and say, and, and by the way, the next thing coming out of their mouth is going to be the Holy Spirit to you. But if your ears are open, you can hear it. And she said, she mentioned this. She's, her husband's in New York uh, City. He's a well-known composer. He's got like a number 16 song on the Billboard charts with a, a group. And they're uh, newly married and, and, you know, bi-coastal is what she called it. Um, and... Uh, she mentioned that she needed, she said this, she says, right now I just don't have the prayer support that I would like to have. And I just, that was in my ear, just sitting over there, and I just thought, well, who better than to, to, to lead us in prayer if we could for such an important work? You just mm -hmm. never know who, who the Holy Ghost might rescue just mm -hmm. because we're praying today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just never know what might shift because we're praying. And I just wondered if you'd just lift up Brooke and the whole human trafficking uh, outreach that you guys are doing and, and yeah. service. All right. Thank you. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, my Lord, for bringing us here today, my Lord. This 
was a divine appointment. And I thank you, my Lord, for bringing each and every one of us here. I lift up Brooke and her husband, my God. I break, lift up her life and the work that she is trying to do to restore lives, my Lord. You are the comforter. You are the restorer. You are the one that meets our needs, my Lord. And I just pray that you would just bring those people, my Lord. Send angels to them to bring them to us or bring us to them, however it is that you will have us meet together, my Lord. But I would just pray that you would just intervene. My God, send your Holy Spirit spirit to intervene in those lives my lord the broken the oppressed the needy the hurting my lord you know who they are my god and i just ask you my lord to just lift up this ministry my lord the hurting the oppressed my god those people my lord who are who have no regard my lord who feel that there is no one there for them that they are not worthy that they have no dignity my lord that they've been stripped of their humanity my lord i just pray that you would just send forth my god your angels legions of angels to just bring them out of their situations my god and i lift up my god brooke my lord lord you know her heart my god you know her need father lord use us to be there with her, my God, to just be her back, her prayer partners, whatever it is, my Lord. Bring us together in unity, my Lord, in one accord, my God. You are one body. We are one body, my God. Bring us all together. We are not one church or the other church. We are one church together under you, Father, under the Lord Jesus Christ, my God. I also pray, my Lord, that you would bless Pastor Eric. Use him to bring forth this word, my God. Use him as an instrument to your miracles, my God. Manifest in him. Holy Spirit, just cover this room. Cover his lips and his mind and his heart, my God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Uh, now the second thing that I want to do is if you're in this, I'm just obeying the Holy Spirit here. If you're in this room and you are a head pastor of the church, I, that doesn't mean you pastor out of your head, but, but you are a head pastor of the church, would you please just stand? Okay. All right. Now, I want to I wanna do something here. And the Spirit of God kept speaking to me the word Catholicism as I was sitting there. And, and I believe I know where he was going with that. Uh, we are Protestant believers, okay, in, in this room today, I would say by and large. Now, you may have come from a, a Catholic background, and, and you may have many friends that are in, in the Catholic Church. And I, don't, I believe that there are Catholic people that are born again, that are going to heaven. If you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's what matters, and you'll, we'll see you on the other side. And, you know, there's things we can learn from, from many different groups in the body of Christ. And one of the things that, that Catholicism understands that Protestantism is still getting the revelation on, I believe, is the, the hierarchy of authority. And I, I, want to, I can't make this clear enough today. I really can. I want, I want to get you pointed in this direction. But if you're, if you're a member of one of these churches, and this is your pastor, uh, I, wa I want you to just ponder on this for a minute. You don't need another buddy and another friend from them. You need a spiritual parent. You need a spiritual mother or father. And you need to treat them that way. That means you don't go running around, hey, Anita, what you doing? You know, if that's what you, if that's what you do, that's all, your, that's all the draw upon the mantle on her life. Hey, Tommy, what's up, good buddy? If that's all you draw from, that's all you're going to get. And now, familiarity breeds contempt. Now, 
you say, well, you're putting them on a pedestal. Well, actually, Jesus did that already. Uh, Ephesians 4, 8 says, when he ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men. Now, they're human, but they're gifts. And it's important that you be, I, I mean, now this is going to be tough to swallow, okay? And, and I'm not the confession police, but I want to help you. I want to bless you. I want you to receive from God more than you dreamed you could get. But even if, even if you're, you're related, that, that may be your, your sister, that may be your mom, that may be your, you know, and I'm not saying that you aren't affectionate in a family way, and every time you see them, you've got to go, Pastor Anita, instead of, you know, hey, sis. But there's a, there's a motive, there's an attitude in the heart that needs a serious shift, a serious consideration, an adjustment. Because, see, when you, when you make them out to be something that they're not or something that's less than what they are you're you're suffocating the voice of God in your life God ordains authority and God correction now listen to me here's another one that Protestants really need help with correction never comes from the bottom up never God won't honor it he won't respect it. He won't enforce it. He didn't influence it. Correction comes from the top down. You know this is true because that's a good way to get fired on your secular job. Now, un unfortunately, we don't get to fire people in the body of Christ. <laughs> but I w if, if you will start treating them, and, and I, many of you do I'm sure if you will start entertaining them and treating them as such you're going to see an anointing on your life you never saw before you're going to see God do things in your life you've never seen before are they perfect no but neither are you and uh, sometimes we forget that and it's easy to point fingers when what we need to do is go stand in front of a mirror for a long 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 time because God knows what he's doing when he puts somebody into office when he calls somebody there he knows what he's doing now that's kind of stern but that's what I had to say and I don't know anything about anything I, and I don't want to know it's none of my business uh, but anyway that's what I had now, if we could just stretch forth our hands and just, let's just speak a blessing. Say, pastors, we bless you. We honor you. We choose by faith to submit to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when I come in this church, uh, all credentials that are great and wonderful about Brother Pastor Eric all of it submitted unto the home local church, to the pastor of this church. And it would not be right of me to say or do anything that's not under the authority that she would have. And you know what? If I'll obey that, whatever my personal agenda is will be sanctified and anointed. And we'll have some real move of God here today. If you look in the scriptures in the book of Acts, there's a couple of words you're going to see there that appear about 11, 12, 13 times, and it's in unity and one accord. And every single time you see those words appear, the supernatural comes right on the heels of it. But if you bite and devour your leadership and one another, watch out. You'll, com you'll consume each other. You know you will. And uh, anyway, that's all I had to say. So. Guys, if you will, turn with me in your Bibles to Colossians 1 and 12. Anybody want a Bible today? I want to give a Bible away. Can I give, does anybody want this Bible? Gwen, let's, let's get this to you. Can we pass this back to Gwen? Sometimes when you need a healing, 
you might want to check up on your relationship with your pastor. I, I want to be careful about, you know, uh, looking at a man or a woman and, and wa magic wands and quick fixes because healing, uh, of all things, healing and finances, I would imagine, uh, you, does anybody know what the term paradigm shift means? Paradigm shift. That means you see a thing a certain way and that's how you see it. And to you, that's true. But it might not actually be true. It might actually not be the truth about a particular thing. And facts, information, revelation comes in. And you have a shift. You have a paradigm shift. The way you arrange and order your thoughts and your thought particular thing. Align themselves with the truth. And that's what a paradigm shift is. And because you say, Lord, I need a healing, I need to confess your word about healing. Well, yeah, that's true. But see, if you don't, if, if, if you're not open to divine understanding, the Bible says wisdom is a principal thing, but in all you're getting, get understanding. Okay, understanding is the why of a thing. If you say, I need a healing, and I need to go get prayer, yeah, you need prayer. But the Lord might say, do you tithe? Whoop. Hold on. Does this pulpit come higher? What does tithing have to do with healing? Well, if you're a baby Christian or you don't know anything, maybe not a whole lot for you. But if you get going in the Lord a little while, and you're and you're you're responsible for what you know. You're, well, really, you're responsible for things you don't know. <laughs> you just truth be told, everybody in hell was responsible to know Jesus as Lord, and they're being held accountable for what they did or didn't know right now. So you know that's true. But if you're going along and and you call this your church, you know, and you're here. And you're not like a squirrel trying to cross the road. You're here and there and everywhere. You make it, you might, you might not, you know. But this is your church. This is where you need to be tithing. And a tithe is not what you call a tithe. Oh, we came to hear about miracles. Well, you are hearing about a miracle right now. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not throw open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out such blessing that there's not room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Anybody want to see the devourer rebuked? Well, I guarantee you there's one real quick, surefire way to do it, to be a tither. Tithe means 10%. That's before taxes. That's before child support. That's before whatever. It's not even yours. It's already God's. Whether you agree or disagree, whether you know or don't know, it's his. You've not given until you've hit 10.1%. So you're not giving tithe. You're paying tithe. You're paying what is due. You pay that bill first. See what happens. Anybody have anybody identify with that? You pay the tithe first, see what happens to the others. With the right heart and a right motive and a right attitude. Not not begrudgingly. God loves a happy, hilarious giver. And again, we're not talking about tithing as giving. We're talking about tithing as something you pay. Well, look at Colossians one and twelve. This is out of the King James Version. And it says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Did you know you have an inheritance? And did you know that some people partake of it and some people don't? And some people partake of it more than others. Remember, 
It's wise to fear the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. But it, get understanding. Understand how to fear the Lord, reverence the Lord, and then partake even more of your covenant. Second Peter 1 and 3, moving right along, says this right here. Grace and peace multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus, God and of Jesus our Lord. I'm in verse 2. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Does, does, divine, does health pertain to your life? Does finances pertain to your life? Does wisdom pertain to your life? Has given to us, has already given to us all things. Well, where are they, Brother Eric? <laughs> Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. I'm, I'm going to make a statement right now, and I want you to write this down. If you take notes, I want you to stick this in your knower. It is as much knowledge of how God does what he does as it is he himself. How God does what he does is how you become a partaker of your inheritance. If you're dealing with an illness or an infirmity or a sickness or a disease in your pocketbook or in your body or in your mind, your emotions, your will, your want to, right now, lift your hand. About 80, 90% of the room. You're dealing with a shortage or a lack in the face of the truth of Scripture. We all need to press in a little more, don't we? We need a little more insight into the knowledge of God, don't we? We need to know something we don't already know. Or we need to do something we already know to do. It's only one of two things. It's never a third or a fourth. It's one of two. Now, look at Hebrews 4 and 6. The title of this message is what I would do if I were standing for my healing. Anybody identify with that? What I would do if I were standing for my healing. Hosea 4 and 6 says this. Hosea 4, chapter 6. My people, not the world, not the world. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now that word knowledge is fresh revelation. You see, I played basketball coming up, and I had a dream to get a college scholarship, and then another dream to play after college and be paid to do it. And I had friends that I ran around with who had similar dreams. Who wouldn't? If you liked basketball, you'd want to go as far as you could. And I noticed something early on, that when we practice from 3.30 to 5.30, many of my friends who had similar dreams decided that since practice is over with, we're done for the day. But then there was a group of us who had other thoughts. Please hear me. Please listen to me. Other thoughts. I'll call them higher thoughts. Higher thoughts. Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
utterance in the Greek is words not pertaining to everyday living, but are of an elevated discourse. Elevated discourse. To call tongues gibberish, to call tongues juvenile or human or originated or in some instances devilish, is to be so far from the truth as night is from day. But it just makes sense that your enemy would smokescreen that like that because he knows the truth. He knows that it's elevated discourse. And if you're needing a healing, maybe you sp should spend some extra time in elevated discourse to reveal a mystery or two about what your, your situation is. 1 Corinthians 14 and 2 says, when you pray in other tongues, you don't pray unto men, you pray unto God. How be it in the Spirit, he speaketh mysteries, mysterions, things hidden, things that need to be revealed. If you left my house 20 years ago on the way to St. Pete and you've not got there yet, my friend, you need to pull over to the side of the road and call somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you've been standing for healing for 15 years for a thing and you're not there yet, my friend, you need to pull over like you did today and ask somebody. You need some new information. You need some fresh revelation. If you have a dream in your heart that's attainable, I mean, it's impossible, but with God's help, it's possible. And it lines up with the word. And it's been 25 to life <laughs> since you started this thing and it's not happened yet, not even close. You need to pull over to the side and get some fresh revelation, some fresh information. And the first place you can start is right there in your spirit, man. I'm getting a little ahead of myself with this, but I want to tell you about my friends playing basketball. At 5.30, we decided... We'll grab a quick bite to eat. We've saved our lunch money from school to have gas to get to Docks. Docks was the number 10 outdoor playground place to play pickup basketball in the country as ranked by people who rank them. USA Today newspaper and Street and Smith's magazine. Some pretty reputable people. And I grew up playing basketball after school at Docks. My mom said, I never wondered where you were or what you were doing. I always knew. If I drove by, I knew where I'd see you doing what you were doing. Never once did I wonder what you were into. Because I was at docks. Because 3.30 to 5.30 was warm-up. That was just getting ready to run. And we used to be at these, these all-star camps. And they'd say, when you're sleeping... Somebody in California is practicing to get your scholarship. And sleeping doesn't just mean you've got your eyes closed. See, when you're sleeping on the Lord, your enemy's stealing your healing. Isaiah 60 says, arise and shine. Your mom ever come to your room and say, rise and shine? She got that from Jesus. She's quoting Isaiah, didn't she? Rise and shine, for your light has come. Gross darkness will cover the people, but the glory of the Lord will shine on you. And kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Oh, I'm drifting off right now. Oh, my. Let's go to Psalm 105, 19. Consequently, a couple of us got scholarships. And I got to college and I noticed that at 5.30, the fellas decided it was time to go eat chicken and chase girls. And I thought to myself, self? It's probably time to go hit the gym again. 
Because what worked in high school probably work in college. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And I got a call right before I graduated college. They came looking for me. I didn't go looking for them. Said, there's a team that needs you when you graduate. They've got an opening at your position, and I've already called them and told them about you, and they want you to come try out. I went, they went, and I've played for about five or six more years after college. And then I got over into the ministry, and I noticed something. I saw some of my same friends running around. They had different faces and colors and creeds, but they looked like the same fellas I came up with in high school. And they all had a dream. They was going to go around the world and tell the whole world about Jesus Christ. And I noticed after about an hour's worth of prayer and Bible study, they were good to go. And then I had a thought. I had an elevated thought. I thought, I bet what worked in high school and college works in the ministry. You know, Paul was a, was a train going somewhere to happen even before he got born again. You weren't going to not know about Paul, whether he knew Jesus or not. But one day, the conductor got a hold of him, said, we need to change the tracks you're on, son. Don't change your habits, your study habits, your disciple habits, your hunger and your thirst and your passion and your zeal. Let's get you some knowledge, some real knowledge. You know, a funny thing happened on Paul's way to heaven. He wrote over nearly half the, the New Testament. This was a murderer at one time. Anybody in here ever killed anybody? Don't raise your hand. I won't ask anybody who ever wanted to kill somebody in here. Several have tried. Several have tried. But you're worth more than that. Well, Joseph discovered a few things about the word. Psalm 105, 19. Until the time that his word came to pass... The word of the Lord tested him. I got out of basketball practice in college at about 5.30. The cafeteria closed at 6. We usually got in there about 5 to 6 unless we just didn't shower. But out of courtesy to everyone else, we tried to make a point to do that. But we weren't going to be in there long anyway. But I used to stuff my pockets with a couple of chicken sandwiches because I lived on $20 a week in college, and that didn't go real far, gas and snacks, and when your last meal's at 6, and you're a college athlete, and you're hungry all day, every, it's like you got a tapeworm, and you never gain a pound. I think I'm going to go try out for college basketball team this year. I'm getting a revelation, right? I'm having a paradigm shift right now. And I got up to my room and I, I started reading the Bible. And about an hour would go by. And I thought to myself, I got this school thing down pretty well. My grades are up. I might just go another hour in the Bible, see what else is in there. And then a, another hour would go by and I'd think to myself, really, seriously, there's not m- many other places I'd rather be right now than in a paid-for dorm, got chicken sandwiches I can throw in the microwave. I had been saved but just a couple months. Wonder what else I missed out on. And then long before I knew it, all my habits had shifted from basketball over to the word of the living God. And I prayed a prayer one day. I said, Lord, would you make my words more accurate than my jump shot was. And I set all the records in school for three-pointers. I've hit 18 three-pointers before in a game. Pretty good. It's an exhibition game, but, you know, no no TV crews were there, but I was there. 
And I said, Lord, would you make my words more accurate than my jump shot? And you know what thought came to me next was, well, why don't you work harder than you did on the word than you did your jump shot? I thought, well, all right, let's do it. So, I've been to the doctor once in 20 years. I went to get a six-month insurance policy for my daughter to get some dental work done. I didn't really need anything. But I figured I'd get her dental stuff for free. And I'm healthy as an ox. Let's just go in there and get this thing. And I did. And she said, why isn't there anything wrong with you? You're... And I said, well, let me tell you about a man named Jesus. She said, get me an autographed picture. I want to put you on the wall next to Peyton Manning and Todd Helton, two Tennessee stars. I said, well... They sure know who they are, but I don't know if anybody would remember me. She says, well, no, I want you up there because I want to tell the kids your story. You're the real reason why someone should be up on the wall. So when I did go to the doctor, it was to sign autographs. (laughs) Because it's a whole lot better to stay healthy than to need a healing. And 3 John 2 says, beloved... You're loved, and faith works or is activated by your knowledge of the love of God. See, you can just drop all that. It might be if maybe he's trying to teach me something. Just say he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. He loves me with a love that's beyond all understanding. I did a few good things yesterday. I could see where I might merit some love. But what about the other day? I don't know if I'd even, if I don't know if I'd have loved me. But he loves me beyond my understanding. Start right there. Get out past your mind. Get out over into the other place. Get out over into the holy place, the place without walls. If he's got you in a, in a corner, go to the round room. So the word tested Joseph. But I thought James said, let no man say when he's tempted or tested, he's tempted or tested of God. Well, no, not with evil. God doesn't test you or tempt you. That's your enemy. Don't go telling off on God lies. That's a good way to stay sick. Just start telling the truth. Just start saying what the, the word says. But he will tempt you with good. Well, there's, there's going to be a church service at 1030 in St. Pete. Yeah, but I had a rough night last night. My toast was burnt this morning. I don't know if I much like those folks. I don't know if they much like me. We all love Jesus. Where you go? He'll hide you in the pavilion of his presence from the strife of tongues. If you let him. If you let him. So this is talking about Joseph and the trials he went through before he was made prime minister of Egypt, second only to Pharaoh in the chain of command, the world's most powerful nation to date. Joseph's ability to persevere in the face of contradictory circumstances is the number one reason he became prime minister. Joseph got delivered from himself. 
Joseph got delivered from mama and daddy. Joseph got delivered from I don't understand and why and when and how. Joseph knew real freedom in the bottom of that prison that you or I could dare to dream of. Joseph got delivered from connections when they forgot about him and his ability to interpret dreams. Joseph was a man who had been delivered from things you and I dare to even consider we might even need to be delivered from. And make no mistake about it, Joseph was part of a community. No man is an island. But Joseph was delivered from his community. He was saved to serve. And Joseph, because of this, was promoted everywhere he went in the face of any and all adversity. And you'll see something else about Joseph in his perseverance. Forgiveness. Joseph was a man who could forgive. That's how you persevere. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, we find this statement. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That the eyes of your understanding, not mine, not Pastor Anita's, not your husband's, not your kids, your understanding. Be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You're not going to get this just because you come to church. You're not going to get this just because you give God an hour or two a week. You're not going to get this with a heart that's not ready to receive. You're not going to get this with a heart that's not open to you might not know all you think you know. I want you to think back with me for a minute. Just close your eyes and just think back with me for a minute to the day you got born again. Can you see yourself there? Can you remember what it was like to know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified? Can you remember the first time somebody brought knowledge your way, how you gobbled it up? Successful business people are successful because to them, every single day is the first day. Successful Christians are successful because every single day is the first day. Even what you think you know, let God confirm it to you again and again. All right, now open your eyes. And I want you to go to 
Proverbs 20 and 27. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Go to Second Corinthians or First Corinthians chapter two, verses eight through ten. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. Be careful how you hear. Be careful what you think you know. But as it is written, I hath not seen. That's your spirit. Ear hasn't heard, nor has it entered into the heart or the spirit of man. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has Revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Each of you came here today with an expectancy of what you wanted to have happen. None of you are going to leave disappointed. I say that by faith in Jesus' name. All through this service, your spirit man's been in search mode. Searching inside of you for what is a miscue, for what is right on track, for what's needing a shift and adjustment. And the Holy Ghost has been affirming the voice of your spirit. Yes, that's right. Yes, you need to change that. Yes, correct that. Yes, you're not. Yes, this. Yes, that. When you leave here, it'll not stop. You need to live this way. You need to enjoy your life this way. You need to enjoy Jesus this way. Say this with me. Say, I've decided, I've decided that this year, that this year I'll, be I'll be in search mode. My spirit by the Holy Spirit, to weed out, to water, to sow, and to reap the things, yea, even the deep things of the Spirit of God, in agreement with His holy written word, in Jesus' name. Because we like to pride ourselves in our confidences and in our knowledges. And if God ever showed us what we didn't know, we'd, we'd come running, Daddy, help me. We, we just need that. We gravitate to that smug place. But sometimes in a service like this, the Spirit of God can get over to you your click, your adjustment, your, your di- the thing you're not discerning. Now, I want to just jump right into some things. I want you to go to Isaiah 53, 5. You guys don't have a Sunday night service, do you? Well, that's good. I come from Africa. That's what I'm used to. In India. In Mexico and Venezuela and all over. London. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes... We are healed. What did we say Peter said? He hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Now Isaiah's 
800 years before Jesus appears on the scene. And he says, by his stripes, we are healed. Peter said in 1 Peter 2.24 that by his stripes, ye were healed. If I were a clock, Isaiah would be here pointing to me. Peter would be here pointing back at me. This is a fixed point in time. No one in their right mind would argue that Jesus has already died for your sins. No one. Well, before he was led to the cross, he was beaten like a piece of hamburger meat. Hebrews tells us, uh, the, the, the language of Hebrew tells us that he, he was beaten so badly that you could see through a hole in his chest cavity. Mel Gibson's movie was not gross enough because it was worse. Why make light of daddy's beating and say, I'm going to get healed? Why make light of daddy's beating and say, well, it might be his will? See, it's how you treat leadership that determines how far you go. And if Jesus isn't a leader, I don't know who is. In Exodus 23, 25, Jesus hadn't even gone to the cross. And it says this about your old covenant. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Let's say you get to the number of your days. You decide what that is. 80, 90, 120. You have a right to arrive at the end of your days well. No IVs, no walkers, no aches, no pains. You remember my friends I told you about in high school who thought once the the practice was over. We were done for the day. I challenge you to have higher elevated thoughts today. When we finish today. Why don't we just call a spade a spade? Romans 10, 17 says, faith, which is the currency of heaven, and if you're poor, here's how to be poor no more, cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. Well, he laid hands on me and I didn't get it today. I know. I know. But you can. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing. Stop putting it off on God. Don't ignore the brutal beating that he took for you and I. You don't believe it, just own it. Accept it. You want to believe it. You know you need to believe it. 
Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Don't skip hope in your journey to faith. A paradigm shift begins when you surround yourself, not mama, not daddy, your sister and your granny. You surround yourself with voices of hope. Admit it can change. Be real. Be honest. Admit that it will change because of your daddy's brutal beating. Then as you meditate, roll around in your mind, in your spirit, in your heart, the truth, not religious doctrine, the truth. And faith will arrive. Because you'll find your heart so full of the love and the truth of God that your mouth will speak it. And Proverbs says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Scientists in Alabama set out to prove creationism happened the way that it did. And they started with Genesis 1 and 1. And the scripture says in Genesis 1 and 1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Anybody ever faced any deep darkness? Anybody ever been drowning in some deep darkness? And the Spirit of God was hovering over the deep darkness. Unable to move. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. For many of you, the presence, the Spirit of the Lord is hovering over you right now now unable to move he's waiting for you to say I am healed by his stripes over and over and over and over and over And over until you decide, why am I quoting what I already have? I am already there. So they took a Bunsen burner. And they heated it up. Because moving water is heated water. That's why ice is frozen. And they bombarded the heating, moving water with sound. And guess what happened? Light appeared in the room. What is your body made up of? Heated, moving water. What happens when you bombard it with the Word of God? Light appears in the form of health and healing. Anybody ever talk to plants? Don't call me crazy. Turn with me to Luke 2, 
42. You getting anything? I can hardly stand up. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. Remember my friends I told you about? Thought the party was over. A few of us lingered about. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. What did he tell Abraham in Genesis 12? Come ye out from among them. I want to do mighty and great things in and through you. Sometimes God's got to get you out of your familiar surroundings and show you you, who you are, who you can be, who he is to get you to get it right. Then to get you back to familiar places. And do dominant things. Delivered from your family and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that, are we seeking him? Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers. What's your next 72 hours going to look like? Twelve-year-old boy. Both listening to them. See, everybody wants a healing. But the Bible says that they came to hear... And be healed. I was at an event Friday night. A bunch of Holy Ghost rappers. Anybody but Sean in here rap in the Holy Ghost? Sean, raise your hand. There's a Holy Ghost rapper. (laughs) W-R-A-P-P-E-R. Because, see, he's got treasure inside of him. you got to peel it back like an onion. He's a Isaiah 8.18 sign and a wonder. He's a Isaiah 45 and 3. Hidden riches in secret places. Treasures of darkness. And they called me out. And I'm hiding in the corner. Just trying to soak it in and listen. I do seven messages a week minimum, every week, and it was Friday night, and I just wanted to sit, and the, and the main speaker said, and, and Pastor Eric, he's got a healing ministry, and if you get with them, you'll be healed, and your kids forever. And next thing I know, a young man with no kneecaps and no fingernails, unable to extend his arms, asked me to step outside. You ever been asked to step outside? You ever been to Oliver's place and been asked to step outside? So we stepped outside. And I told him what I just told you. Everybody wants a healing. But not everybody's hearing. And I told him how to get what he already got. And he's my friend on Facebook now. Must have worked. (laughs) 
And I laid hands on him too. He's got a part to play just as much as I do. He heard as much as he could in three or four minutes. Now my face says he's healed. What does your face say? So, all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and prayers and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? You ever been persecuted for your faith? By your mama and your daddy? There's a new generation coming. They already don't care about mama and daddy. Wait till the conductor of the train gets hold of them. Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And maybe they had a right to. But see, there's another thought coming. There's an elevated discourse happening. See, this is where you and I fail. Because we get to the end of our understanding and call it quits. I'm telling you to get outside yourself. I'm telling you to do what's not comfortable. What's misunderstood. Lied about. Cheated on. Ostracized. Unaccepted. And that's just how you treat you when you step out in faith. <laughs> not talking about anybody else. Some of you, some of us need to just get out of our own way. And give ourselves permission to succeed. Because there's, there's two things more powerful than God on this earth. There's your will and your traditions. Just ask Jesus. That's what he said. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know? You ever got a revelation your parents didn't know everything? You ever get a revelation you don't know everything? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Don't feel sorry for yourselves. You've got a Savior who I can identify with all that you've been through. Do you want me to tell you how his brothers disbelieved in him? Do you want me to tell you where was Joseph at the cross? Where was his countrymen at the cross? Where was Peter at the cross? Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. I'm going to close with this. If you're in here today and you're not where you want to be, don't feel bad but let's do something about it. Jesus did. Now, Jesus never sinned in his whole life, but Jesus increased for 18 years until the time of his appearing public ministry began. Stop kicking and screaming and start increasing inwardly. Drop it. All that aspiration, drop it. Start increasing inwardly.
in wisdom and stature. The only thing that qualifies you for promotion, healing or otherwise, is growth in the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. You either have it or you don't. Be honest and start with hope. Then move over into faith. Stop judging one another, criticizing one another, ostracizing one another. Unless you're directed to, Scripture's clear about some things. The way people walk, just because they're saved, sometimes you have, I'm part Cherokee Indian, and the Cherokee never spanked their kids, but they just ignore them, the whole village, till they got right. A spanking only lasts a little while. There's things God would like to talk to you about, but he can't. He won't. Because you need to drop all that. You need to just get humble and, and, and still and quiet before him. And just sit at his feet and listen. And stop putting him on the clock. I've been on five continents, ten nations, all over the U.S. I've seen the miracles. I've seen the healings. I've seen the salvations. I've seen the deliverances. I've seen the churches. I've seen the missionaries. All I want to do is sit at his feet. All I want to do is hear his next word to me. Then all I want to do is do his word. Please bow your heads and with me. If you're in here this morning, and musicians, if you could come up, and you are ready to receive what rightfully belongs to you, I'm going to do an altar call a couple of different ways. This first altar call that I want to give, and, and, and please be respectful of this moment and this time. If you're not participating in the altar call, please stay put. Unless your, your bladder, Lord, supernaturally watch over the bladders. Stay joined with us in unity and one accord. If you're in here, and you would like to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, either for the first time or the second time, come forward right now. Anybody? Please just, uh, let's just have you stand right there and just turn and face me. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, simply lift your hand. Amen. Would you please come up? Would you please come up? Yes. If you're in here and you need or want a physical healing in your body, 
come forward. Now everyone else in here, I got one more question. If you're in here and you know you're not where you need to be with the Lord and you want your life to do a 180, you want to turn in your life, lift your hand. All right? Stay seated right there. Now, if you guys could stretch straight away, let me just make a line here, if you could. Give each other some room, just a line. Now, sir, would you come forward right here? That raised your hand for rededication. Now, if you're in here and you feel a call to the ministry, you're not in ministry or you wish you were, raise your hand. Anybody? Sean, Diana, would you come behind these folks here? Debbie, would you come behind these folks here? Uh, would you guys here come behind these guys? Now there's a couple in here and, and your marriage is in shambles. Or there's a couple watching and your marriage is in shambles. I'm talking about what the Bible calls shambles. I want to pray for you. But I don't want to embarrass you. I don't want to call you up. I just want you to hear this prayer. I have some friends who were looking for direction, looking for ministry direction. And I said, between the two of you, you have a hundred years worth of experience walking with Jesus and you're not on the same page because you've changed life has changed you're not where you were why don't the two of you take a piece of paper and write out the perfect scenario for your life ministry geography where you live what you're doing and do not criticize one another's papers do it independent of each other you're not permitted to critique the other's piece of paper then I want you to put the papers together and I want you to circle the similar phrases on that piece of paper that right there is the will of God a good, good idea of the will of God for your life. You ever heard the expression, on the same page? 
Well, today we've endeavored to get you on the same page with God concerning healing or anything. Well, your relationships are the same way. And I'll make no mistake about it. God can't bless mess. And if you're not in order in the home, start there. And start with getting on the same page, the biblical page. And then let healing begin. And then let direction come. But you can't ignore one another's individuality for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God loves you before he loves what you do. And you're important to him. Each of you individually. So set all that stuff aside and start right there. I just, that's healing right there, man. I'm just healing right there. Just start right there. Start on that simple page. Now, somebody is estranged from their wife that's under the sound of my voice. And, and I'm, he, I'm speaking and decreeing healing into that situation right now. Just humble yourself and receive this declaration. Just humble your heart and receive it. Somebody in here is claiming Isaiah 54, 17, or would if they knew it. And it says, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you'll condemn or put it down. Show it to be in the wrong. This is your heritage, your righteousness, your legacy, your inheritance. It comes from the Lord. Press in, press in, press in. When a man or woman's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Are your ways pleasing the Lord? Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please the Lord. He makes even your enemies to be at peace with you when you walk in faith. If you're not pleased with one another, are you walking in faith? with God not your version of faith the Bible's version of faith that might be something you want to pray in tongues about now some of you are believing God for things but your love walks off see you're confessing you're meditating and you're believing but your, your love walk is off. And see, faith works or is activated by love. And I'm not talking about how you act around me or Pastor Anita or whoever. I'm talking about when you go home. I'm talking about when there's nobody but God watching. See, faith's confession is, is 24-7 or it's just your concoction. Faith's confession is is who you are, not what you do. Somebody in here is seeking the Lord for a rhema word, guidance and direction. And I'm going to give you some scriptures. James 1 and 5 says, If any man or woman lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and without upbraiding. He doesn't make fun of you for asking. Psalm 32 and 8 says, I will guide you and teach you with my eye. His eye is his word. Stop seeking an office 
or somebody's mantle and start seeking the Word. The Word, the Word, the Word. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. And it's all about the value of the Word of God. Give God something to work with that He didn't have before. Slow down. Cease and desist in your maneuvers and get and dig into the Word. Linger at the altar. Linger in His presence. Linger in the Word. Linger after church. Linger at night before you go to bed. Start doing different things. to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit right now. I know I've got you standing, but that's okay. This is it for today, unless you are lingering. Those of you that are, that are, that are here, let's just lift our hands to the Lord. Do you know there's power in the blood? Somebody's Somebody's got the devil on their tracks And you wish it weren't so Just hang out in the blood Just hang out with us right here in the blood He'll run off Because he don't like the blood Just hang out right there Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this man's come forward for a need. Philippians 4.19. Father, supply his every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, from the soles of his feet to the top of his head, open that door. Open that door, Lord. Psalm 5 and 12, surround him with favor like a shield. Surround him with favor like a shield. Surround him with favor like a shield. I rebuke that spirit off of him in Jesus' name. Cease and desist in your maneuvers right now. Psalm 91.10, no evil shall befall him in Jesus' name. No evil shall befall you in Jesus' name. No evil shall befall you. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Help him with his employment. Help him with his job. Spirit of the living God, move in his situation. Psalm 91.10, let no evil befall him. In Jesus' name. Mark 16 and 18 says, Believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And 
And I lay hands on my brother right here for healing from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. Satan, take your hands off of him, off of his mouth, off of his heart, off of his imagination, off of his thoughts. Cease and desist in your maneuvers against this young man in Jesus. Young man in Jesus' name. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. You want everlasting life? Say this with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, you're my Lord. I receive you in, now, in your fullness. Dwell in me. Abide in me. You're welcome in my heart. You're welcome in my life. Thank you for your healing from the soles of my feet to the top of my head. Isaiah 54, 13 says, All your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Great peace is coming for you and for your children. Great peace teaching, teaching the word of the living God, the savior of many, not just the select few, but the common man, the common man to do uncommon things. Expect, expect. I hear the word jewelry in my heart. Does the word jewelry mean anything to you? Yeah, well, he likes you. You're getting ready to get some jewelry. You're getting ready to get some jewelry. And you are a jewel. You are a jewel. And don't be afraid to sow seed for what you want either. You had a little niece, a little girl somewhere. Bless them. Bless them with precious seed. No reason, no rhyme. Love doesn't need a reason. Love is the reason. Just see what happens when you do unexpected, uncommon things for people deserving and undeserving. And you make it a regular routine habit. See what happens. See what happens. You'll have more to do more with. He'll make sure of it. And there's a spirit of alcohol in your world somewhere. Somebody somewhere. They've not been true to you. They've not. They've, there's an afflicted. It's something. So, I just hear Canadian whiskey or something like that. It, 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 this is the thought in my heart. There's somebody God wants to be closer to you and they're not able to because they're having trouble putting the bottle down. I don't know who it is. I don't know. And probably because they're not close to you, how would you just recall it right away anyway? And it don't even have to be a relative. It's not my job to interpret this stuff. But you'll know it. You'll see it. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to take their hand, okay? Take their left hand and say, Satan, I bind you, you demon of alcohol, in Jesus' name. And just pray a nice prayer with them like that, okay? You'll see them. They're hurting. They're suffering. Just pray that with them, okay? Probably their left hand for a couple of reasons. Maybe they're married. Maybe they'd like to be married. And then the left hand attaches to the heart. You know, it's right up to the heart like that. And it's the heart of God. It's a shepherd's heart. Don't be surprised when you walk right into it. Okay. Now, this is a word of wisdom, so it deals with the future. Just sit it on a shelf. It'll bring itself to pass. You've got to help it. It'll just happen. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Give me a hug. Bless you. Bless you. Gwenny Poo. Gwenny Poo. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I rebuke that spirit of infirmity. I tell cancer to go in Jesus' precious name. I thank you, Father, that Mark 16 and 18 says, Believers shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We thank you for the healing virtue, the healing power at work within Gwen, from the soles of her feet to the top of her head. Thank you, Jesus, for clearing her ears out, getting the beeswax out, for opening up her understanding to the word of the living God and the part that she has to play in it. 
thank you for that quick, lightning quick word on her mouth. That by his stripes I am healed. And let her discover Isaiah 45 and 3. The hidden riches and secret places. The treasures of darkness. The treasures hidden in your word for her. Not from her, but for her. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the honor of kings to search it out. Lord, let her search out healing in your word. Let her become an expert. Let her become a proponent of divine health and healing. Let it flow. In Jesus' name, amen. It's done. It's done. It's done. Pastor Tommy, please come forward. Get ready to run. Get ready to run. You feel that? Transferring the anointing, the power. Transferring from me into you, from me on to you. Just let it abide. Just let it abide. Let it abide. And you'll hit a great stride. Let it abide. Jesus, thank you for Brother Tommy, for Pastor Tommy. Help him, Lord, make the crooked places straight. Help him, Lord, to have win insight of witty inventions. Help him to see intuitive ways and creative ways of doing all that you've called him to. And Lord, bring him out into a large place, a broad place. Put his feet in a large room. And Lord, cause all of his enemies to turn their backs and to flee in seven directions. Lord, help him to help him to, to allow his own heart, his own heart to, to thrive. Help him help him to grow. Help his mind to soften. Help him to soften. Help him to saturate. Lord, I'm asking for a quick miracle in his life. Lord, help him to walk in the light. Help him, Lord, to take the next right step. To do the next right possible thing. And Lord, you'll do the impossible. Help him to rest and to trust, to relax in your word, in your word, in your word, in your word, in your word. First Peter 5 and 7, cast the whole of your care over on the Lord, for he cares for you affectionately, affectionately. His way, His word is tried and true. His wisdom is pure. His way is pure. Follow that which is pure. I see you just taking that thing off your neck. Maybe not now, when, when the Lord quickens throwing it off and saying, I don't need this anymore. I don't need any of this anymore. I've got what I need right here in Isaiah 53, 5. I see a convincing spirit coming. I see it. I see a convincing spirit coming. Remain convictable. Remain tender. Let the Lord correct. Let the Lord adjust. I see a convicting, convincing spirit coming. Glory, I feel that breaking off of you right now. I do. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Lord, a luminous light in, in Pastor Tommy's life. A luminous light in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How many of you want more of God? 
We had our, our nice healing prayer. Now, now come back up here. Come back, come back up here. You hang out right there, Brother John. You hang out right there. Give me a fist bump. We're cool. We're cool. Hang out right there. Who come up here? I I've not done this before that I remember, but come up here. You want more of God? Come up here. I have a right to impart what I can, and you're willing and al allow me to impart. You're good. Now I didn't. I wouldn't. Where's Sean? Come up here, Sean. You're supposed to be my right hand man. Make sure I don't drop. Come, grab that stool in case I need it. Sean, grab that stool. Y'all pray for Sean. He's a man of God. Wisdom. Now, I've ne I've shunned him. I've been preaching for 20 years. And I have never stood up in a pulpit or, or in a jungle or in a bush anywhere, a prison, inner city, and sat with the anointing that I sat with this morning. I'm going home to talk to Jesus about it because there's something shifting in my life. There's something changing in my life. And so I want to sow real quickly, okay? Because I know that you reap what you sow. And I want to sow into you right now the Holy Ghost anointing in you. Now, I'm not in and of myself some great this or that. But I, I know that there, there's a... There's a, a run, there's a conversation, there's a life I have in the Lord, in the Spirit, that I wouldn't trade. this way. I feel like Jody before we prayed for her. man right here. You. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Thank you, Lord. God Almighty Jesus. sit and eat this. Take this. Walk in this for a while. Secrets. Secrets are coming. Secrets. Secrets. 